Welcome to the podcast, the Game On Financial Podcast. We need a better name for that. We're coming up with it. We'll take all comments into consideration. So if you have a better name for the Game On Financial Podcast, let us know. What did we say the other day? Sounded good. It was not the firm. It was the uh, the boardroom. It was the boardroom or something like that. So we're coming up with rooms. <laughs> we're coming up with ideas, names. If you have any, drop them in the comments below. Um, Joseph and I have talked about it. this. is going to be a weird show, and I'm, I'll get to us. I'm, I'm your local tax guy. That's Joseph. This is going to be a weird show. We're coming right off a hurricane. We're jump, jumping straight into updates. Mm-hmm. This is like weird. I, I feel weird today. It feels, I told you, it feels like a Sunday because yesterday felt like Saturday. And like we came into the office and I texted you this morning, like we're still doing the podcast, right? And you're like, yeah, I don't see why not. And I'm sitting in my head like, I don't either, but it just feels weird. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, I assume you feel that we way. Usually give, we usually give like weekly updates on how the week's gone. And yeah, for, for anybody watching this after the fact, Today is the 31st of August, and yesterday the hurricane, what was it, Adelia? Adelia. Adelia. Came Adelia. through Florida and then, uh, you know, after came up through Georgia, which is where we're located on the East Coast. And it didn't end up being horrible here. Um, mainly wind is what we kind of experienced, but my power's been out for over 12 hours now. Well, yeah, going on like 16, 18 hours now. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, just mainly – Mainly just a weird day. I mean, we worked from home, but power was in and out flickering, and we definitely are remote and we can work from home. But just with all the weather going on, kind of watching the wet, watching the news and the updates, it definitely felt weird. And then without power last night, and for me at least, uh, it was it was just kind of strange. So today is abnormal. I feel like yeah, being based in Savannah, it's always been weird. Every year we have a hurricane. Um, we've had so many since just my wife and I moved here. Since you've been here. It's weird because like you, there's all this anticipation and build up, and so those days leading up to the hurricane, it's not like waste of time, but it's just like you're trying to figure out what's going to happen, what you're going to do, kind where you're going to go, toes, travel. Kind of, yeah. yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. Then the then the hurricane hits, and that day you don't know what's happening. I worked all day yesterday for the most part, thankfully, um, and then lost power towards like three, four o'clock. It started kind of power was in and out, so I kind of just shut down. But now, like the next day, we wake up and like sun's out everything's back to normal and it's like it just feels weird it feels like all this build up to a hurricane and by the time it hit us it was actually really just a tropical storm thankfully Mm -hmm. really high winds but still just a tropical storm i don't know it just feels weird so the podcast today we didn't have a full day yesterday to go over topics and everything so for today's topics we had to kind of come um i guess a little less on a little more unprepared than we normally are, but still more more of just a kind of talking episode than a big topic episode. We normally, I feel like, have one centered topic that we frame everything around. Yep. Um, today we'll just be kind of more general, talking some new stuff and and a couple uh, a couple of things that we just feel like are prevalent right now for us. But um, yeah, I mean, we can hop right in. Uh, I was looking at through news stuff to to come up with things and. I saw this crazy article uh, slash video about the dude who stole all the Starfield copies. And see, I didn't see that. Tell me what. Like, so basically, this guy, he's a 29 year old guy. I think it was in Tennessee. Could be wrong. He stole 67 copies of Starfield and then he filmed himself playing it and he filmed himself and put it like, I don't know if it was live stream or just a video, playing yeah. it for like 45 minutes. And. Basically, he like convicted himself. Like he got arrested. He got. He's like getting felony charges for like. He's actually not getting felony charges for all le- leaking the game. Although that was what everybody online was like talking crazy about. It was like you leaked the game before it launched. That's like a big deal. Yeah. But they didn't charge him with leaking. They just charged him with stealing the sixty-seven copies of the game. Mm. Um, well, I just um, thought that was nuts, man. Like, why steal sixty-seven copies? Why would know. you steal sixty-seven? Like, is one not enough? You want right. multiple playthroughs? Yeah, that's weird. So like. When did this happen? Uh, it was this week. Um, I, I don't know exactly which day, but I was watching the video of it earlier. So my man got, he stole the game a week before release because the game's out now, right? I, yeah, I, I saw it came f- out today. Yeah, so like yeah, he, he just wanted to play a week early and now federal charges? He, he basically <laughs> was like, in the video, I saw him talking about it. He was just basically talking about like, he just wanted to try it out type of thing. But he but he did like... But I'm going to film myself doing it. Film himself doing it. So he, yeah. And it was funny because I was watching uh, some of the comments talking about it. We're basically saying that all the people that were responding to the video he posted of his gameplay 
were like roasting his gameplay. They weren't even saying like, <laughs> like oh, the game suck. looks like, good or bad. Yeah. Or anything. They were just like literally roasting him like being bad at the game. I, so I've been trying to work this quote in at some point during one of these podcasts, but this is a perfect time. Life is hard. It's especially hard if you're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. like, for you sure. feeling yourself still like he probably could have gotten away with it and been whatever. I don't know why you still sixty seven copies. I really don't yeah. like. Don't what so content creator like is he gonna no, no, no. No, just? I don't think so. I think it's just some random dude. <laughs> I'll link you the video after. We'll put it. In. I guess he's way. gonna resell the copies or something uh, like I think that. So, yeah. yeah, probably discount. That's crazy. Yeah, nuts. And Bro, uh, what in the world? Yeah, I just thought that was crazy because there's there's some what hype around the game for sure. Oh and yeah, then it's like to just film yourself doing something illegal. I think this day and age we live in with people filming everything they do, like it's normal. There's some things you probably shouldn't film. I think we've probably all done things in our past that maybe we wish weren't on film. They Then they're not. Yeah. In this day and age, it seems like everything just ends putting up them film. out there. Man, like it's You recorded wild. yourself committing a felony. That's <laughs> yeah. pirating. So, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, that's... that's uh, I just figured that was something we could talk about. Yeah, that's that's wild. What else you got? Uh, new 2K is coming out. I think in about a week, mm-hmm. uh, saw a lot of people excited about. We that. have a two K creator actually who um, I saw that and I saw he's been tweeting about it. So that'll be that'll be good for him. Obviously, two K releasing every year is good mm-hmm. for um, any two K creators. Same Madden, Call of Duty, but yeah. So didn't Madden just release not long ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Kurt's been playing it. Mm-hmm. I've watched Kurt Ben Kurt play a ton, and I did see some mixed reviews. Out. I saw some people hating yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, I think that, that, that's Madden though. I mean, it, so. We get so dialed in, especially with Call of Duty, but like every game that does that produces a an annual copy, you know, people hate EA Sports the same way people hate Activision. Yeah. And they're gonna like Rip Yeah, on. they're gonna hate Madden for different little tweaks to the game and stuff. Yeah. That that's gonna happen and it's gonna be the same thing we talked about last week. EA Sports is raking in money. They don't you care. You have that core community of any game or any game developer that is diehard and they know exactly kind of the ins and outs of it. And they're probably every year are unsatisfied because yep. it's just the nature of human. That's just human nature is to be unsatisfied with something. And so, I think you're not you're not wrong. It's like in every every different game inside of our industry that people play hardcore, that community is always begging for something. And if they don't get it, they're yeah, gonna be outraged. I mean, it's kind of like you and I had the discussion. It was more of a heated debate, but talking about how COD is the same year over year. Because of the feel, like you know, a COD game when you play a COD game, man, it's the same. Sure. And they, you're going to have the same core player base who, you know, you're going to have those casuals who buy the game and they play just occasionally when they have time. But you're going to, the diehard people who are playing Madden all the time, they're going to notice the nuanced differences. Mm-hmm. They're going to speak up. And so, yeah, it's interesting. But I think, um, you know, going back to kind of Kurt playing it specifically, I think that's really good for him and his brand just because. Is if you watch his content, he's leaning more into like the gameplay, playing online, but coaching you through it while he does it. Yeah. I mean, how often do you get like a true NFL quarterback that plays the game? It's pretty unique. That's awesome that he's putting out. Yeah, yeah, and it is really cool listening to him talk. And like before the snap even happens, he's telling you what's going to happen. I wonder it's, if anybody does that with two K, probably for the NBA stuff. Probably oh, not. I don't know. You know, I think no, not from the NBA specifically, but you know that's really interesting too. In that. I would love to sign a content creator who has played in the NBA before, and I'm their their NBA players are playing 2K, yeah. like, and just seeing that and hearing that because I would I'd love to like when Kurt was actually in the league, seeing him in the game that would have been sick, you yeah. know, and like having that. Did you see that video of uh, of Tyreek Hill talking about how he doesn't watch film? He just wa- goes to Madden the night before and looks at the player stats of the who he's playing against. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no shot, right? Short. He literally, I think he was trolling. Obviously, I'm sure he watches film. But he literally said in an interview, he's like, you know what? Something's crazy about me. He's like, I, did, I don't watch film. He's like, just the night before the game, I just go get on Madden. I look at the player stats. He's like, you know, their speed, agility. Yeah, I was about to say, go see who can run with him. He's like, and then he's like, you know, I just base it off of that. So yeah. once I know, what, you know, where they stand. That's wild, bro. Speed about. kills. because So he's got like a freaking 99 speed in the game, and he goes and looks, and he's like, if he gets matched oh, up against 80. a linebacker and they're an 80, like, no. <laughs> House call. The phase, yeah. <laughs> yeah, house call. No, so, yeah, with it, with 2K coming out, that's awesome. Um, Madden just released. We're getting into that time of year where all the games are, you know, we're kind of getting into the fall, which, by the way, super excited about that. Yep. Um, as we get into the fall, all the new games dropping, even X Defiant before long. We I got didn't it. put that on here, but I'm excited. I did see there was an update. Yep. Um, ba- basically, they were saying, like, they because they are not – 
because they're not releasing the same game year over year and they're not using the same 30 third party testing that you know some somebody like Activision would they're having to go through a lot more extensive testing to mm-hmm. to get it to the point they want yep. and they and uh it was funny um they basically released and said our beta was actually a beta like usually the beta is just the game and they're just letting you play it you know, they they were basically saying like no the beta is a beta and then we let you play it for that long cuz we wanted that much feedback now they're making the changes so where people are used to playing the halo beta and then a month later it comes out or cod beta and then a month later it comes out this is not that situation and so i think that that's probably for the delay there but i'm super excited for it man i think it's going to be really fun i love that i think that's the best test of communication too is like if you just let people know ahead of time like no look i know we know what the expectations are this could be part of the topic later, but we know what the expectations are here. Here's how we're doing it. And here's why. And if you think logically about it, it makes perfect sense. Like this was truly a beta. We didn't just let you play it because like, yeah, everybody won more play time. That's one thing, but we let you play it because we wanted the data points to see where we needed to make adjustments and changes to the game. That's perfect. That That makes somebody play for two days. You're just, you're only going to, you're going to be so limited. Yeah. And that's perfect. That makes like, when you think about it, like that makes perfect sense. Take your time. Like, bro, like if you take an extra two weeks for development time, that's a long time for them to grind out for two more weeks. For us, it's like nothing like, bro, go play Starfield for two weeks. Like, and then the the game will be here when it's here. And I do think too, that hopefully I'm very, I'm, I am very hopeful for it because they have been so transparent, but Hopefully the extra time taken will show in the game. It'll be a good game. And I think that's where people don't necessarily mind if you take longer, if it ends up being good. It's where people like the Call of Duty community has gotten burnt is they take extra time or they they prolong things and then it's not good. And then it's like, well, we had to wait and it was bad. I think with Call of Duty, I mean, this most recent one, it's crazy, dude. They had all like slide canceling, bunny hopping and all this stuff in the beta. Maybe not all those things were in the beta, but they have those things in the beta and, they and then they out. take them out. Like you play the beta and you're like, yeah, this is great and everything. And then they took features away mm-hmm. and slowed the game down, which same thing. Maybe they look at the data points and they're like, people weren't happy with it. I don't know. But yeah. I mean, I kind of know that's yeah. probably exactly what they did. But still. Yeah. With them, we talked <laughs> yeah, about them last yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I pretty much know. But still. So yeah, a lot of games dropping. I know we originally talk, started this conversation with 2K, but um, yeah, I mean, two, it's exciting because like we have a wave now coming in of just games dropping. Starfield kind of kicking us off right now, but then 2K, then a couple other things. So Yeah, and I think it's a good time of year, too, for our creators because as as we do work with a lot of creators um, that are specifically in the gaming kind of world, this is a dry time of year. You yep. know, they've played whatever game they've played for the past eight, nine months, whether that's COD, Halo, whatever maybe even 2k they've played for a couple years now or, yeah. or whatever they enjoy and those new games coming out is exciting because while not all of our creators that we work with are variety streamers or variety creators getting to play something new is exciting and fun and so it, it's cool for them too because i think it kind of revitalizes the inner gamer and all of us of like we want to we want to get out there and try something new and so yeah it, it's fun, and yeah, I'm excited for the fall, like you said too. Just to add on, I mean, football coming. This oh weekend. man, big football fan. So I, you know, we've talked about. I, I want, yeah, college football. Well, NFL too to yeah. some extent, but college football for the most part. We've talked about this. I want so for this podcast specifically, we want to get in on here. And we want to be able to talk, and we're talking news, and we're talking these other things. I think it would be silly to not think that college football is not going to get talked about at some point, just because, like. When the fall comes around, now you guys are going to get to see us. It's a big part debate. of our life. Yeah, there's going to be, <laughs> and it may not even be heated. I mean, you're so, this is funny because as an Alabama fan, I'm a Georgia fan. I mean, it's the rich fighting the rich right now just because, like, top two. Top two. Yeah, yeah. it's like at this point, it's kind of like we can sit here and debate all we want, but it's, we're, we're both, both in a great wishes, position. Man. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is, it's funny because, you know, Alabama losing one or two games last year, it's, it's funny when like you come into the office and it's like you had a long weekend because Alabama lost. Team lost, yeah. And it's funny because like in the past that was always me, yeah. you know, always coming in frustrated. So but, walk by your office and you're like, "Don't talk to me." Just yeah, keep just keep going. And this goes back for so many years, but it's so much fun, dude. Like yeah. Saturdays, it brings so much more to the table, and honestly, it's fun because. Um, Notre Dame played the other day, and Macy and I were out of town. She was doing a competition. 
my mom sent me a picture of Sutton, my daughter, sitting with my dad, and they were watching the game, and Sutton was just like, like entranced by it, like just mm-hmm. watching, and I, it was uh, entranced. Is that a word? Entrenched and in a trance. I don't know. I think yeah, I just I made up a word. I, I think either. I just made up a word. That's okay. But the big word of this big week word is, of the whist week. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I love that because, like, it's I don't know. It's just a good family thing that. I, like I've always been involved with it. Always loved watching. Grew up in the it. south. Up in the Football's south. a big thing. Football's man. big deal. So and and just excited for the fall too. It's a t- time of year that we love. So yep. Get out the flannels. Um, maybe our gym won't be freezing cold because they'll keep the air on the the heater we on. We got this a year. little bit for that because it's still high nineties right now. So we got yeah. a little bit before the. It'll before sneak it. up on us, dude. You just said it's August thirty first, man. Like when did that happen, dude? It feels like I I remember tax season so vividly. It feels like summer has been kind of long. We've had a lot of things we've done this year, specifically here, but just outside of this. Mm-hmm. We're walking into September. We don't have a lot of time. Like, I mean, we've got, you know, yep. September's going to be busy just because, you, like you said, football starting up. So, like, weekends are going to be busy. We've got a lot of, like, yeah, travel coming up. Travel, TwitchCon's in October. We've mentioned we've got football games we want to go to in October. So, those weekends are gone. And then you've got other travel plans. We'll roll right into Thanksgiving. Then we're at Christmas. And my both of us have families living out of town. So, we're like... We're going to be busy, and yep. this I, we talked about it earlier. This time of year is always difficult for us because it's hard to everybody keep that think, focus and that you know tax season is easy because yeah, everybody like, thinks tax season for accountants and even extension season if they even know about extension season think like oh spring and fall is when you guys are slammed. It's like man, to be honest, it's like the summer is only real break because the fall there's lots to do, but we're also busy with like you know with the holiday and stuff. So I yeah. definitely think. Yeah, uh, tax season will be here before we know it. We'll be doing a podcast in January talking about, you know, kicking off tax season here soon. So um, definitely, definitely the year is flying by. Reviewing so. client lists. So a bunch of new clients signing, which is good. And then firing a bunch of clients. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> firing some, <laughs> but not a bunch. Um, yeah, I mean, just going through that process and the, ad, the administrative part of it, going over pricing, all of these things that you try and bake into the fall. And then we still have work like, truly yeah. tax work that we have to sit down and do it's a lot and yeah. it's a lot to ask when we've got people traveling you and I, our communication generally not drops off in a bad way but it drops off because you're going on a trip i don't want to bother you then you come back and like i'm going out of town and it mm-hmm. like back and forth and just making sure everything stays flowing is i think it's difficult i think that's something that this year we will definitely try to work on and develop is that process of communication when people are out of town we talked about a few episodes ago, just like dialing, dialing our processes in here. Um, and I think that is part of it too, is yep. like figuring out how we're not relying <clears throat> on any one person for something so that, you know, if they are gone, we can pick up right where they left off and just kind of keep rolling. So yep. I think we'll experience that this fall and, you know, we'll work through that. But yeah, um, the, we, be- the beauty of that is, is clients as well probably also will be busy. I know a lot of our clients monthly calls I've been talking to recently, they all have travel plans coming up um yeah for different reasons so yeah and i mean they've all got families that they're trying to go see or whatever they're obviously trying to grind content and then all the new games are dropping so like we have to call actually doing their job our call of duty creators we got to talk to before what's the release date november seven i think yeah so we've got to talk to them before that because after that drops we're not getting on like bro there's no shot yeah and we'll talk about it in a little bit with uh, the client relationship part of the conversation that we're going to talk about today but um and even like time zones is a consideration. Like, yeah, uh, you know, we have we have clients in Hawaii, we have clients in uh, in Europe, and we don't have a lot of international clients, but we do have some. And just working out the time zone difference of when to talk and when to try to schedule meetings is, is a consideration. It's tough. Yep. Um, next on the list was David Bondarhar. This happened right before last week's episode, and I didn't put it on there. We were already mm-hmm. talking about Activision. We probably should have thrown it in, but. David Vonderhaar retired from Call of Duty. 18 yep. years he was there. Uh, he helped with, I think, eight or nine of the COD titles, mainly the Treyarch ones. Um, we're big Call of Duty fans, so we would be remiss to not talk about it. Man, I don't know how much of you guys listening follow competitive COD, but David Vonderhaar was very instrumental in competitive, the competitive aspect of the game, and he was very instrumental in 
listening to the community and giving them actually making changes and giving them what they wanted. Yep. So I know the COD community, it was very sad to see him go because it was like all the titles he touched and all the things he had his hands on yeah. were really good. Yeah, that sucks. Um, I noticed when he, he gave that final kind of sign off and he was like, you know, saying that he was retiring from Activision and all that or stepping away from Activision, he did mention that he was going to work on another project. And I'm wondering like... Not that no conspiracy theory. I'm, I'm genuinely wondering like what that's going to mm. be like. What I, he's going to be involved. My first thought was X to That's what I thought. Yeah, I, I mean, doubt like it, truly, I wouldn't doubt it. Not going down the conspiracy rabbit hole or anything. Not that has to be conspiracy. Like I mean, that would make per. It would be a natural transition. Mm. But also, you know, it could be a number of things. I mean, 18 years in in Call of Duty, it would be reasonable to expect. Maybe he just wants something new, like a, like a Starfield or just something else that he can put his time Fresh. into. Yeah. Um, that being said, like as involved as he has always been, he'll, there will always be a place for him for like competitive cotton and all that, you know, like he's going to watch the match. I, I don't doubt he'll be sure. at the matches, you know, so, sure. but you're right. It's interesting. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about it last week, but that was a, a very big thing in the COD community. I saw numerous retweets, mm-hmm. like people talking about it and all that, even content creators who didn't play competitively, yeah. like a bunch of, I think. People knew his name because whenever things were really getting done, he was in the mix. And I think that's yeah. that's a reputation that I think we probably all want to have is just being productive and getting making things happen. That's something that um, we all probably try to pride ourselves in. But I think yeah. at a large company, I mean, our whole episode last week, you guys can go check it out, was about Activision and how things are hard to get done at a company that big. Yeah. Um, to have the reputation to be the one that got it done is, yeah. is good. It'd be awesome when you step away from anything if people, you know, genuinely were like darn this sucks you know he yeah. was so great this and that that that's a that's a pat on the back that's that a pat want. on the back yeah, yeah so definitely no. um next is mr beast this is uh we don't talk about mr beast a lot even though you know with content creation uh, that we do we should probably talk about him more <laughs> um but he broke what I do you mean, even say i mean yeah, this, exactly. yeah this is like ridiculous but he broke the 24 hour views record which he held the record for. Yeah. I mean. But <laughs> it was interesting because the topic kind of arose that, at least that I saw, which is the reason I put it on here, was that, you know, he broke the, it was 46 million views in 24 hours, which is just <laughs> absurd. That's crazy. But um, the topic arose kind of to start talking about it is like, he's setting his records now to be his old records. And if he's setting a record, he's beating like all of YouTube. So yeah. it's it's setting YouTube records, but he's, he's fighting after himself, you mm-hmm. know? And I think... Yeah. We could dive into Mr. Beast in general, and I mean, we have time today. We we could, but I think it's dangerous when somebody's goal is to beat themselves uh, in anything, right? In any sport, in any anywhere that you look, if they're not preparing for you, they're preparing to beat themselves. That's dangerous, right? Because you're preparing to beat them too. Yeah. So, and and they, who knows themselves better than them? So, yeah, I mean, you hit a point, and this is like the apex of where you would want to be in anything right when you're striving for a goal or anything like that but you, you know who who can compete with him right. nobody i mean it, it, he's untouchable and like when you see now you become numb to it like you, st- you just said 46 million views in 24 hours like you can't even rationalize that in your head you're like yeah. oh he did it again and then you just move on like bro 46 million in 20 that's that's insane 46 million over all of time is a lot but that's almost 2 million views an hour yeah. like that that's ridiculous like that when you when you truly like sit down and think about it, like content creators, the bulk 99.99% of content creators, when they post a YouTube video, if they get, well, not 99.9%, even in the top 1%, if they get a million views in an hour, that was a good video. And then to get like, 24 million views say, like I that would say a million views on the video uh, in, at all not yeah in 24 hours but in an hour but just ever to even a million a million view video is yeah. impressive yeah and like to get you know you've got some videos out there that are getting five six but maybe they hit a million like in the first you know two days three yeah. days they hit and the then the rest of the year they, yeah yeah the rest of the year they stacked up or over five years right. now they have five million views he did 46 million in 24 hours that that is absurd absurd and uh, like he should be studied like he's just well, like you know what's interesting and th- this is where i was talking about we could go into it about him if we wanted but being that he is as young as he is mm-hmm. i think he's 25 
twenty six, maybe. Yeah, yeah he's like young. That. He's very young. Yeah, um, younger than us. He <laughs> not much was, younger. I than think you, it was but... Alex Hormozzi did a video on him, basically saying that he believes that Mr. Beast will be the wealthiest man in the world by a long shot, not even close to the richest people on the planet right now, which is a bold statement because yeah. if you you know most people don't think about billionaires or multimillionaires. Um, there being that many of them, but if you go look at the Forbes list, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of them that are up, up there close to each other. So to make that claim, which if you guys don't know who Alex Ramosi is, you should check him out. He's, he's super smart guy in the business world. Um, to make that claim about Mr. Beast is huge, but his reasoning behind it makes total sense. And it's because he's setting these records at 25, 26 years old, however old he is, he's setting records like this, getting paid on all these videos he also has all these other companies that he does, and he's he's only a quarter of the way or a third of the way through his life. Most of these people who are billionaires and who are there at the top are at closer to the end of their life. They're in the last yeah. third of their life, and it right. took them their whole life to get there. He's catching up with them pretty damn quick, and it's like, man, if you start to think about what if he's doing this for the next 50 years, he's going to, you know what I mean? Well, take it a step further. I mean, just look at not just him doing it, that's one thing, but how he's doing it, he he's doing it with eyes, people watching him like that. He's he's built his his entire audience is the world. Yep. And now, like he and I think in the maybe in the same talk, but maybe it was a different one. But it was Alex Hormozzi who was saying, "What's going to make him a ton of money is when he shifts to like feastables or something like that." Well, because he's now doing it. I mean, he's, he's already doing it. Yeah, he has feastables that he's productized his business. And so now, like, you take all those eyes that he he's built for the last, well, how long has he been doing it? Like 10 years. 10 or maybe more, but not, not much more. So 10 years, he's built all of that, and now you just parlay that straight into something like Feastables or something like that. If he got half of his audience to buy those, just free money, like a free printing money. And he yep. could do that with that. He could do it with a merch line. He could do it with you name it. I yep. mean, he could just tell... Half, it, you know, again, if he got half of his audience, if he got a third, just like, hey, go buy this new thing I just dropped. Yep. And you know it's going to be good quality because the thing is, what he's known for is he takes Spending all the money, money. Yep. and drops it right back into his business. And it's his tax returns will be interesting to see because of that, just because he rolls every penny do right back know, into the next video. Do you know what's really interesting is, so Ludwig did an interview talking about um, his most viewed video. And the funniest part about this is, and, and you can go watch it, Ludwig's most viewed video on his channel is a video Ludwig did with Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast's team produced it, and Mr. Beast did not like it enough to post it. So he told Ludwig he could have it. And so Ludwig just, the video that would have been uploaded to Mr. Beast's channel, he posted it on his channel, and it's Ludwig's most viewed video. That is wild. And How Ludwig, crazy is that? Ludwig is a massive, yeah, he's huge. Like, huge. Yeah. like that's crazy. That's his biggest video there's, to date. There's levels to this. And like, if you go watch it, you can tell that it's a Mr. Beast video. It looks yeah. just like all his own. But to to Mr. Beast standards, it wasn't good enough. He didn't like it. Something about it. Whatever. And so he was like, "No, I'm not. We're not gonna. That's we're what, not gonna post it." That's what's crazy is like, how good do you have to be to look at it? Because if I looked at it, I. I wouldn't be able to tell, yeah. you know, like I'd be like, that That looks like another Mr. Beast video, you know, but yeah. he looks at it and he's like, nah, this, this ain't it. You know, yeah. here, you can have it like wild. Absolutely. Yeah, there's love crazy for sure. And I, and I mean, I think there, there's a reason why all the younger generation now is looking at him saying they want to be the next Mr. Beast. And he's changed the content creation industry, I would say for the better. Um, and really idolized. He's idolized now as you know, the best and there's a reason, yeah. but, um, Pretty cool. I mean, and we, if you asked him, he'd probably t he'd tell you like he's doing what he wants to. Like this is like his he loves it, yeah. childhood. He loves it. Like I there, love there's that. There's some Mr. Beast uh, interviews out there that are really interesting. In yeah, him kind of giving away some of his secrets and how he does stuff. But pretty wild stuff. Um, we should maybe do an episode on him. I think that might be cool. That would be a good one. Into the strategies and kind of some of the ways he's done things that are extremely smart. Yeah, and also talk numbers. I mean, if you take like analytics wise, like just 46 million in 24 hours, what does that like actually mean? Like that... Dude, he's he's making so much money. It's that's, unbelievable. That's crazy. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then taking that money, I mean, at some point, like you couldn't spend enough money. I saw a video where he was basically... If a guy, like a guy had to like capture him, it was a bounty hunter basically. Yeah. And if he captured him, he got to keep, it was like a hundred K in a bag or something like that. And they like helicopters, everything. And it's like, 
when you watch it and you're thinking like, okay, Mr. Beast has a different expectation based on this and that. So treat it like it was a cinematic movie, right? And they have helicopters, this and that. Like, no, this is a guy who just made a YouTube channel like forever ago. And he's not just a guy. I mean, he's crushing it. But like, bro, he's got a helicopter in his video. Like, if me and you wanted to go do that right now, like, okay, let's rent a helicopter. Who do we know in Savannah yeah. that could do it? Like this and that. He's like exactly. trying to navigate that. And he just, you know what? If this guy captures me, I'll give him a hundred K. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's what? Unbelievable. It's awesome. But I, but I think when you do think about, you know, you hear some of those things said by him and his team of like, Oh yeah, we spent a million dollars on this video. Or we spent $10 million on creating this video. That sounds like outrageous. And it is a lot of money, but when he's getting these kind of views on it, I mean, if anybody knows about how much AdSense pays out, it's us. And I can promise you with a video like that, 46 million in 24 hours, that's only going to get, it's probably got double now. I mean, that, that video was a little bit ago. He's he's doing just fine. I have a, um, I don't know how much time we have. I, it won't take long. I have a funny story about Mr. Beast. Yeah, I, I did a, <laughs> so accountants are boring, but we, ha we have to have continuing professional education to keep our license and stuff. So I was actually on a, a panel earlier this year. And it was with a, a, another guy, and we were talking about content creators, influencers, stuff like that, to other accountants. Mm. And it was a, I think it was a two-hour course or something. Like that. It was a long one, or an hour and a half, 90 minutes, I think. Sure. And this guy advocated that he was in the space and do content creators. Was an attorney, right? Uh, he was an attorney. Um, he was a CPA attorney. He worked on mostly, like, big cases like he wasn't doing everyday bookkeeping or anything like sure. that um but he advocated that he was in the space nothing like a lot of the other attorneys we know that are in the space this guy was but he was putting on that he was in the space he really wasn't and you could tell the reason i could tell was because while we were getting ready for the cpe and the webinar and stuff like that we had to meet beforehand to test the technology and stuff he couldn't even like get his camera zoom rolling work, he couldn't yeah. get zoom to work all this stuff that's the worst and thing. it was like obvious like and then his camera when he did get it rolling it was like facing like it was like his laptop camera but he was mm -hmm. sitting way higher so it's like facing up at him and stuff like that and it, 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 it didn't look good at all yeah and not that to be in the space you have to have you know a camera or a yeah. microphone or anything but it helps sure and so this guy we're talking we're doing this little tech setup thing and the moderator had walked off for a second had to go to the bathroom or something so he's like asking me questions and stuff and mr beast came up and he said what do you think about mr beast and i was like well i mean i mean he's like the biggest youtube creator like what do you mean what do i think about him like i think i think is is awesome what he's done you know but i don't know him personally so i can't i can't, can't speak to that and um he was like you know i think it's just He's like, I think it's just bullshit. I think, I think it's fake. You know, he's just trying to get attention. And I was like, in my head, I didn't say so. I didn't know I, when he hit me with that. I was like, this is completely random. Like, I didn't bring yeah, this topic up. He yeah. just hit me with this, and I was like, well, this is random. And I'm not gonna sit here and hate on Mr. Beast, but in my head, I'm like, well, one, the the entire purpose of YouTube is attention. Like, it's you're trying, yeah, it's, attention. Yeah. So, but he was talking specifically, and it was funny to me how Mr. Beast across the globe got hate because he r fixed blindness in a thousand people mm -hmm. and, and gave away shoes to 200,000 people or whatever it yeah. was. And people are like, those are bad shoes and this and that. And it's like, man, like what? This was like the first time, like this was when all that was happening though, sure. like for the first time and all that. And so this guy had apparently just seen this video and anyway, he, he said that and I shout was like the first time chat, by the way. Yeah. Shout out. Um, oh, that's Mr. Matt Ranger. Hey, what's up, Matt? Um, so we uh, <laughs> had a conversation with him yesterday. So anyway, dude, we were sitting there and he's like telling me all this. And he's like, I think it's fake. It's kind of, you know, bullshit. I was like, he cured a thousand people's blindness. And the guy was arguing, basically, he profited off of it. I'm like, is that not what you would like? What would yeah. you rather have happen? Right. <laughs> like, what's that's like, like saying a doctor what? can't can't cure like yeah. do surgery on somebody and th they shouldn't get a paycheck. Yeah, like, like that makes no sense. And he, when he was saying, it, and if I had pointed that out, like if I said, okay, let's be logical about this. Like instead, the only difference is instead of like those thousand people paying him directly, he got paid because he got YouTube AdSense or yeah. Google AdSense and all. That. And I'm like, how do you? I wanted like in my head, I'm like, how do you even rationalize? Like, what are you talking about? 
And he was just openly, he's like, yeah, I think it's bullshit. You know, Mr. Beast is just putting on a front and this and that. I'm like, what front? He films the whole thing. Like, yeah. there's no front. It's not like a trick or anything like that. Like, it's literally right there. Anyway. I think, I think no matter what, however successful you are, you're always going to have haters. That's yeah. just how the world works. There's always going to be people that are miserable or people that don't understand, and they're just going to look down on it. Um, but, I mean, let's be realistic. Mr. Beast is crushing it. Yeah, and this guy, you know, not not to sound like a hater, this guy was probably in his mid-50s or so, and he, he was, again, advocating he was in the space and all that, and yeah. then you, you, like, come on, man. Like, like, yeah, I don't know, yeah. yeah, I don't know if people are going to buy that. Is you know, to listen to the podcast, by the way? Probably, he's not going to be able to, he does, that's the thing, he probably doesn't even know what Twitch is. He wouldn't know how to log on to Twitch, and he was like, yeah, I work with creators, this and that. I'm like, no, you probably have a couple of creators who had... Sure weird tax situations, probably high net worth, high net income, right. but that doesn't mean you're like in the space, you know? And it was, it, it was funny. Like it, just thinking back to that, you saying Mr. Beast, I'll kind of never forget that conversation because it was just really weird how that guy was one of those people who really like, he was mad about the fact that Mr. Beast would have the audacity <laughs> to fix a yeah. thousand people's blindness or something. Something you said when you were just talking about that though, triggered in my mind, a conversation I had yesterday, which, um, it's pretty cool just because so I figured I would share. Um, you brought up the thing about having a good setup. And, you know, we use decent mics here when we're on client calls. We we use similar cameras to the cameras being filmed right now. Yep. And, you know, we, we have good setups, good lighting, these types of things, right? Um, and I was talking to a client yesterday who is actually a client of our other firm. Uh, we're seeing in associates, which right, works right. with more traditional clients, not content creators or gamers. And this client is somebody I know somewhat on a personal level as well. And he actually said a comment to me on a phone call yesterday. He said, do you, uh, do, do you stream, do you live stream? And I said, I, it caught me off guard, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I said, I kind of didn't know where it was coming from. Right. So, so I said, no, I don't, which I have live streamed my gameplay before when I'm gaming sometimes, but I don't stream for viewership. I just stream for my friends to watch me or something like that. So I said, no, you know, no, I don't. And he's like, oh, well, I just figured your your setup that you have, you yeah. know, with your your camera and all looks really nice and your lighting. So I just figured you might, it looks like a live streamer setup. It's so funny. And, uh, and it was interesting to me because people notice that stuff immediately and it's and it's so small you know yeah. it's as easy as okay let me upgrade this mic and get a hundred dollar mic instead of a twenty dollar mic or let me get a mic an external mic period versus using headphone mics right or versus literally just talking to like you said on the computer with the camera that's on the computer and it was really interesting because what it did was it ended up triggering a conversation about gaming and he, the client actually started talking about gaming and ended up basically saying he wants to game with me at some point, which I thought was really cool because I'm like, man, like just by me basically having decent a decent setup with good lighting and all these things, it triggered a conversation to talk about Game on Financial and what we do here, which is he was really impressed with thereafter talking about how we serve as content creators and that industry as a whole, yeah. even though he's completely removed from the industry. It's so interesting because – on the so on the CP webinars I'm a part of when I'm on a panel or anything like that they always say like oh man your audio is so good this yeah. and that your camera looks you great you probably have the nicest setup yeah and and we don't we just don't think about it because like this is what we would have been doing because our content creators almost expect it and so when we have again like a panel or something I'm sitting on but also when I had a couple clients come in last Friday and they're they're actually from my hometown. And mm -hmm. so like they come in and they see all this when they were in my this office, set up here. this set up here, yeah. because like my computer's right over here. And also I was like, y'all come on in. Sorry for the mess because I have, you know, the cables running. I cleaned it up as best I could, but these mics are just sitting here and they're asking questions like you have a podcast, isn't that? They're like blown away by it. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's this casual thing, you know, yeah. nothing too crazy. Yeah. We have four viewers. We're yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like nothing like, Whatever, but to them, it is like, oh my gosh, that's wild, you know? Sure. I was watching my, um, that's my wife's sister-in-law, so my sister-in-law too, technically, but not, sure. anyway. And um, she's in real estate, which I think, going back to the client you were just talking about, I think is real estate yeah. also. Mm -hmm. But she's in real estate, and she just started filming the walkthroughs and all they do of houses, and then she, that does they'll that. post. Yeah, yeah, and so that's like really forward thinking because a lot, a lot of real estate agents are beginning to do that. It's on their social media to market, yeah, yeah, and they're doing it in ways that traditionally just weren't being done. Yep. And so we actually even have a client in our other firm. 
um, goes and captures drone footage yep. of the houses, makes probably like 150000 a year yep. charging for that service, and he'll just take his drone out, fly over the house, circle stuff, rounds, yeah. circle rounds, yeah, all those things. It's so fascinating to see that. And when we tell people what we do, even my barber like asks what I do, and I'm like, I tell them I'm like this and that, and they're like, oh wait, so you like work? You work with like like famous people? And I was always, like, always well, get I mean, the like YouTubers. Yeah. you work with YouTubers? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we do. Like, yeah, we yeah, they're YouTubers. But it's so like we don't think about it because yeah. it's like so casual and it's well. And the question that the client asked yesterday was, how, how did you get into that? Like, how did you guys start doing that? You know, yeah. you guys like gaming or whatever. I'm like, yeah, like that's that's the whole thing. Is just basically. We had the accounting skills to do it, and you, I always give the credit to you, of like basically taking that leap of why can't I do this for gamers and content creators, and then yeah. just started. And the the cool part about it is we, we, we can always circle our conversations back to the fact that we just want to help people, and why not help people that we're interested in helping? Like, help yeah. people. We, we could do this work for anyone. But why, why not do it for people that we enjoy, that we like to watch? I mean, I'm on Twitch all day. I have my, my buddies always ask me. They're like, man, I feel like you watch so much content. You're always sending us stuff. I'm like, dude, I have Twitch on all day long. That's all or we do. Kick. Twitch or kick. I just pulled up, tabbed. I'm watching YouTube like in the background while I'm doing accounting work because I can. And it's... It sounds bad because like we're always on our phone, but it's the same thing like... When my wife and I are hanging out, a lot of times we're in the same room, but we're both on our phones and we've acknowledged that we're like, you know, the, we want to be near each other, but we like, there's nothing to talk about right then. So we're like both on our phones and we're just hanging out and she's doing the same thing because a lot of her business is driven through by social, social media. media. So when she's posting stuff like she's, this sounds silly because it sounds like an excuse to be on your phone, but like she's working, like. She's responding to emails on her phone, this and that, and I'm doing the same. Yep. And yeah, you should unplug. Absolutely, you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned you were forced to unplug yesterday because of no the hurricane, power. and you were like, "I don't, I don't even know what day it I is." Just started <laughs> reading the book. I was like, <laughs> "Like, what is happening?" Yeah. And that's I get that, but that's the thing, dude. Is like that's that's the beauty in it is because like when I get on Twitter, yeah, I do scroll. But honestly, a lot of times when I'm scrolling, I see all of our clients on there liking their posts, liking their posts, yeah. retweeting what I think is like Just interacting with that community, interacting, yeah. being a part of it, and then checking DMs, checking emails, doing all these things. How great is it that we get to do all that for our content creator clients just whenever? Like I could do it right. We're on this podcast. I could literally pick up my phone now while you're talking and do yeah. it if I wanted to because yeah. it's so fluid if you're disciplined and you can maintain the backside of that and really control it, I think it's awesome. Well, and you just, why wouldn't we do that? Don't get that in other, in accounting with other industries. Yeah. You just talked about with like real estate, which is the other side of the business that we do some of, um, is, is getting into social media a little bit. And I do think for larger companies and certain clients that we may work with, social media is a part of their marketing for sure. Yep. But I feel like with what we do, it is everything, you know, it's, it's where, everything works and runs. And so yeah. it's really cool to be able to do that because I mean, that's, that's the age we're in, right? Being millennial, Gen Z, whatever. It's like, it's how we grew up being on social media, interacting through discord. You know, I'm discording people back on my phone all the time. All like the it, time. It's just nice to be able to have that flexibility. And honestly, they appreciate it too. Like they would rather just send us a discord than an email. Like how many, I, I can tell you right now, 95% of my communication is Discord first, email second. Yeah. 95%. Yeah. And and honestly, like you watch a creator that you're like really, you know, you've been watching for forever. Uh, Call of Duty, for example, sure. you see a creator, you just like DM them and say like, hey, this is what we do. We'd love to hop on a call with you. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't have, I wouldn't have fathomed that what three years ago four years ago like it's crazy that it's just, only been so recent but yeah dude you just think like imagine going back to the firm because we didn't think about it when it was like this then but if we go back to our old firm we're just sitting there like bro we just show up we work on the clients we work on that are handed to us and it, a part of that was because we were young and we were just kind of we didn't yeah. like going to solicit and get business was not what we were yeah we were just doing not the really job. Your job yeah and so like think about like now it's like, oh, you know, I really like watching this content creator. You may have just discovered them like three months ago or something. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually enjoy watching them. Like, yeah. I'm going to hit them up. Yeah. And then you just hit them up and like, you DM them and they're like, yeah, how much do y'all charge? And I was like, bro, it's that easy. Like, and yeah. now all of a sudden you're talking to a creator. You would have never, we just wouldn't have done that previously. 100%. Because we had no value to bring. Right. Like, why would they look at us any different than, than the millions the of people guy. who are trying to talk to them all the, the time? Guy. It's so much fun. So dude. that that kind of brings us to 
is good to tie in to our next point, which is kind of the, the topic that we, <clears throat> that we had brought up for the podcast, which is client relationships. And in a bigger, in a bigger sense, how do we navigate professional client relationships? Because as we just said, as you just talked about how easy it is, a lot of it's social media, a lot of it's discord. A lot of these things you're saying are against professional quote unquote professional relationships or professional processes and yeah. what i mean is you know in professional services whether it's legal accounting any kind of financial services the tra the traditional processes are email right maybe a portal phone calls phone calls you know sit down meetings in person right you know sitting here in front of each other even fax for some firms <laughs> which is crazy how many how many of our game on financial clients have you met with in person? No, none. Zero. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm Zero. really trying to think none. How many clients of our how many of our game on financial clients have you gotten on a phone call with? I don't know, a few. Very few. Very few. Very few. Only if like only if truly like my either. power was out yeah. <laughs> and I I couldn't discord. Right. Because we either are discording or we're getting on a video call. And the video call is more so for us than I think for the client. Yeah. Even a lot of times they don't actually even have their cameras on. It's more so for them to see us and see that we are real people and we have, <laughs> you know, we we have an office that we're working in. But yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about just navigating those relationships because we kind of talked about communication wise how we do that. And I think we've stressed that quite a bit. But what are what are some, I guess to frame it this way, what are some hurdles that you see us having to kind of jump over? maintaining professional relationships with our clients with specifically content creators hurdles um the biggest hurdle really is when we were at previous firms where and the only reason i'm giving the backstory is for context here when we were at pre a previous firm we're working with business owners who are older they've they're probably local and they work you know they work nine to five or eight to five and they they own the businesses, hours. but there's set business hours. Our content creators, that's not the case. You mentioned previously, like we've got creators in Hawaii. Like if I, if I message them at 7 a.m., I may wake them up. Six like, hours time difference. Yeah. So like, or I may hit them in the middle of a stream. Like they're probably like if they're late night streaming. And so knowing like which creators stream when and stuff like that. A lot of our creators don't have a set schedule or anything like that. So like their streaming is random, which means if that's how they're making their money and that's dictating the flow of the rest of their life style, then, you know, a lot of times they're going to get to us kind of last. They're going to check yeah. their emails last. They're just going to wake up that day. They're going to stream. And then whenever they get off, they're going to take care of all the other so stuff. So you say priority level wise, we're just a little lower on the list than we may would be for a traditional business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with a traditional business and there, there are pros and cons to it. So like with a traditional business, like if you message them after five, you're not getting them. Versus like with Discord, I Discorded somebody at probably, it was like seven or eight, thinking they'll, they'll check it when they check it, you know? And they actually got back to me. I was trying to get a signature. They got back to me right then. Mm -hmm. And that's been the biggest hurdle is we just talked about it. We're kind of not, we're always on. We I have no problem turning my phone off and just saying like, I'm not responding anymore today. Like mm -hmm. I'm done. Um, but, you know, that's kind of, I could see where it would be a problem for a lot of people and a big hurdle is like you people have different stream times across different time zones like when they get back to you sometimes if the client is difficult to get a hold of when they're ready to talk you got to be ready to talk like you job we're doing yeah sure you, that happens and you got to know who those people are because that's not everybody and you may say like well that's not the way it should be like that's the way it is. Like that, you, there's no getting around that. And the best way you can mitigate it is in the beginning, setting those expectations. Like we have a client right now, not part of game on, but you know, clients not responsive at all until they need something. And then they give us a 24 hour turnaround. It's almost laughable for us. And, and I think some of those situations, like maybe it is expectations on our part and maybe we should just reach out and tell them like, Hey, that, this isn't how it works or it's, we're not a good fit. And, yeah. and those do arise, but I think yeah, we've that, done that. I, I mean, think navigating like a professional relationship in the sense you're talking about with game on, that's a great point that you make with the scheduling thing. I think something you hit on too. And you, when you brought up of a more traditional client business owner, nine to five is even maybe a maturity level, right? Oh yeah. Something that a lot of people think about, but they don't think about is a lot of content creators, gamers, people that are doing YouTube, are younger people, right? They're our age or younger. I'm 27, you're 30. We have a very few clients that are older than us. Um, yeah. We have a couple, 
but yeah. <laughs> but but not many. Not many. And there there's a, a component of that of being in a professional firm that we've been in before in a corporate America environment. Certain standards are are kind of just known. Certain communication standards, certain ways you yep. present yourself that a lot of content creators don't know and they have, haven't had to know because maybe they've been creating YouTube videos since they were 18 and they're 22 and they're doing just fine without those standards. And that's 100% understandable. So I think from that standpoint, just a maturity level, not in the sense of like this person is truly immature, more so of a professional relationship. Yeah. They don't necessarily know kind of some of the things that we almost expect, even though we don't, we don't, know that we do that's a great point we we have i mean we were working with doctors lawyers you know you were working with other accountants trying to get things done we're working with business owners who for the most part are probably have have a higher education degree mm -hmm. and so you think about that like in high school you're not learning like how to email back and forth how to correspond with people this and that especially not in a professional manner and right. when you go to school college you don't necessarily learn those, but again, kind of the maturity thing, like you're growing up and are, like that's part of college is like yep. developing that. And then you go into the workplace and you kind of learn it. We have some clients who are very responsive and who are on top of it. And I have one on the top of my brain right now, and you're probably going to think about the same person, but this person we know worked a some corporate level job like we did. Yep. And, um, and it shows through and it shows through like, She's super responsive and she's super like when it comes to respectful of your time, all these things. Yeah, now, all I of wanna, that. I want to say on top of this is we're really more so just talking about the inner workings, not more so yeah. of our expectations, because to be quite honest with you, it's been a change for me to, to learn this because yeah. I've had to realize clients are going to forget about meetings and clients yeah. are going to discord me 10 minutes after the meeting and say, oh man, I forgot. Can we do this later today? And yeah. And it, it's, it's taken a learning curve for me. It really has because I didn't even know that I had those preconceived notions that is like Until you, you got, show yeah. up to the meeting when the meeting is. If you book the meeting, whatever. And at first, it really was one of those things where I felt like, you know, kind of like disrespected a little bit. And then I had to start realizing it's like, that's not how they work. That's not how they understand it. Yep. And it's not disrespectful because they're not being disrespectful at all. They're truly just, they just forgot. And they yep. don't have a schedule like I do. And so navigating that has been, I definitely would say a hurdle. However, now that I know it, I just discord them a day in advance. I discord them 10 minutes in advance or an hour. And then if they miss it, we just reschedule. And I don't take any disrespect because I know it's not, you yeah. know, against us. Coming from a, a firm that was much more strict and traditional, it, it is weird because a lot of the things that we do now, we didn't even know the options were available. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you're wearing a long sleeve t-shirt like that was never happening yeah. at the previous firm. And like here, it, when we got here and we started doing this, like you just strip away the unnecessary stuff. Right. And then you realize like, holy, like I've got so much more time and so much more flexibility to just like, all I'm trying to do is help you. Like, I just want to help them. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, they don't show up to the meeting. Like, well, I can't reschedule later because of this. Like, wait, yeah, I can reschedule later. Like if it means getting this project done, like, yeah, I'll reschedule later depending on what it is. You know, sometimes I can't and sometimes I don't because I don't want to because I have something else I want to get done this yeah. that day. And we're definitely not saying we don't appreciate when people are, you know, on yeah. time and, you know, show up and all these things. We definitely appreciate it. But more so what we're saying is just navigating those relationships. We have that understanding now of just knowing that some creators, their schedule is 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. and ours is more nine to five. And, we, yep. you know, we've had to shift that. And now it's not really nine to five. You go to the gym every day about four o'clock yep. and then usually you work some more at night. And it's because you realized like, am I really getting anything done between four and six? Like probably not. People probably aren't responding to me, but if I'm on from like eight 30 to 10, people probably are online. And so you, you just, you've kind of shifted schedules that way. And yep. I think that's been, that's been a, a learning curve for us, but I think we've been able to definitely be successful with it. Um, one of the things I have on here is like, how are we trying to break the mold of those, you know, maybe preconceived notions or traditional processes? I think that's kind of what we just talked about, right? Is like, we don't want to be known as the, okay, if I email them at 501, I don't get a response. Like, no, we want to, we want you to be able to get us any time. Yeah. And not that we're on call. There's plenty of days where I don't yeah. respond until the next day. <laughs> yeah. But 
we don't want creators to feel like they have to send some fancy traditional email no. with great grammar for me to be able to service them. We're trying to get a job done. Like on Discord, wherever, like if the only formalized thing we have to make sure we do is for security purposes. Of course. Got to make sure you're not sending like, I don't want you to send anything with your social security number, address. Don't send that in Discord. Like I tell, I tell every new creator that we sign, I tell them that. Yeah, it's like, please don't. Not because like, yeah, that could get the job done quicker. I understand that. But there are certain things like we do need to take our time. Like, I know it's a little yeah. bit slower. Please do it this way. We got to be safe here. Um, and we have requirements where we have to do that. But yeah, I, we're trying to get a job done. Like if, like if I ask, if I'm going to formally email you and then it's, that's something, a method you don't check. Like in the past, yeah, we could probably get away with saying like, I emailed him like three, four, three, four times. And my manager was actually really good back then. She's like, well, did you call him? Well, did you, you know, whatever, did, how did you drive over there? Like yeah. if you have to, cause the, if the point is not like reaching out and covering your ass, the point is getting the job getting done. done. And with discord, with email, with phones, with like, bro, that's all we want to do. Yeah. Because ultimately, we know, one, like, getting the job done is what gets us paid. So, like, I'm trying to get it done. I want projects in and out as fast as possible. But, two, that's what the client wants. They, yeah. like, that's why they came to us in the first they just place. want it done. They, I, I was talking to a client yesterday, and, and I basically told her exactly what you just said. It's like, my goal is not to bother you, not to be on top of you all the time, but my goal is to just get this handled for you and have it done. So, when I'm reaching out for a meeting, it's because... It's because I just need you so I can get the job done. I want you came to me for a service. I'm trying to get that done. So I'm that's why I'm reaching out. I, it's funny because we we think alike and we're always like, hey, look, don't want to bother you. I know you're busy. Yeah. I know you're doing this. Right. But it all I want to do is get this off your plate. Yeah. Right. All I want to do is get it done. Shout out to Brooke for a first time chat. Hey, Brooke. Um gotta get you on the pod, by the way. Yeah, I gotta get you on the podcast. Like, come join us. But yeah, that that's the thing is like if I one, if I don't respond. It's not because I, I'm ignoring you or anything like that. I, I'm just usually we are you and I, and I think people appreciate this. They may not come out and say it because at the time, like they're in taxis and people want to know right then. Right. But we're pretty regimented, right? We have a schedule. Like I'm trying to get this done and I lay out my projects for the day and this and that. So if somebody texts me middle of the day and I don't text them back, it's more so I've literally turned my phone over and like I'm trying to just mm -hmm. get it done. That being said, what other, like, there's not, like, you're not discording your 55-year-old accountant. Like, those projects drag, and to some extent is, you know, this is why I don't have, you don't have to use us, but use an accountant that's, like, up to date because yep. your project, you're going to be pissed because your, thing, your tax return's dragging, and you don't know why, and they, the accountant hasn't called you. It's because they're busy, and you're like, well, that's stupid. And I'm like, well, maybe it is stupid, but that's the way it is. Yep. It works in reverse. The same way we say, like, we have to adapt to our client schedules. They stream at night or they stream early in the morning, so we respond at night, this and that. Like, you as the content creator, if you're trying to get an accountant to get your work done, don't go to the 55-year-old who's still doing everything by paper because right. it's not going to happen. Yeah. And it's unrealistic for you to expect that. Definitely. When your tax return drags, that's why. And then, you you know, you say, well, I mean, I pay $700. I pay a lot of money. Like, Apparently not enough. Yeah, I know. Like the market speaks. Like you may not be paying enough money because if you're only paying seven hundred and they have ten other projects that are paying seven thousand, your what they're your work's not getting yeah. done. Like it's just not because during tax season, our time we have to pick. Yeah, what are we going to get done? That's right. that's what it comes down to. Right. Well, last question I want to uh, harp on is just the time that it takes, right? H how much time would you say that it takes to develop these relationships? Because you actually brought this up to me this morning of, you know, we have clients that come on and we don't really feel like we get them in the rhythm until maybe a year after they've been here. At and least. that's for a lot probably. of reasons, right? It could be for, they just had back taxes. You know, we had, we're going backwards. We're doing returns in years past. It could be for a number of reasons. It could be communication. The client's not on it, whatever. Um, but how... Talk, talk a little bit about the time component of building this professional relationship that is untraditional, building it with content creators between, you know, Game on Financial and a client. Yeah, if a client comes on in January, it's really easy for us to look like a star by the end of April because, you know, it's tax season, so we can get your work done and stuff like that. But if a client comes on middle of the year or in August, it's like, hey, look, we've got a lot of a lot of catch up, set up, whatever. It doesn't matter. We get all that done and then we get rolling. And this is speaking more for monthly clients, right? We mm -hmm. get everything rolling and we're finally kind of hitting a stride. 
And in the beginning, because we're trying to get so many transactions done, we may have to call the IRS. We may have to get this set up and that set up. It takes time. And I can never tell you how long, because like if we're dealing with a third party like the IRS, mm-hmm. I, I'm, Some stuff is out of our I'm handcuffed by them. Yeah. I just can't. There's nothing I can right. do. That all fixes itself, though, between about six months to a year. Usually projects, they should not drag longer than that. Right. If they're dragging longer than that, there is something more serious at hand. Like yeah. that is not good. So six months to a year is usually about when you hit a stride, everything's caught up and you're like, those monthly calls are much more valuable because you now have, you can discuss business. Like the books are always caught up. You can discuss what business and all that. Is we're, we're kind of going from, okay, we got the past done. Now we're going forward, right? We're, we're able to actually start looking forward versus most people's accountants. They're talking about looking back. When you yeah. go to them in spring of 2024, 20, that's coming up. They're going to be doing 2023's tax return. Now we're talking about what happened last year. We're talking about the past, right? Yeah. When you come to us, our goal is let's get the past portion knocked out ASAP. Yeah. We want to look forward. We want to talk about planning. We want to get you prepared for next year. We want to get you prepaid on your taxes. We want you to know everything on the front end so that nothing does catch you off guard. The, yeah. the worst thing we want to do is to have to tell somebody, hey, you owe this amount of tax and you know you didn't know it was coming. Yeah. Um, you want to answer that? Well, I was going to say, we're not all tax, and this kind of actually is a kind of a corollary to what you were just saying. I'm most, I'm pretty much the only tax, I would say. You're no, local tax guy. I'm your local tax guy. <laughs> no, I mean, like, when you think about it, you said we're trying to get the past knocked out. We're trying to move forward. Yeah. You can do those at the same time. A lot, what happens, and this goes with how we do things, not that this is the best way, but it's the best way I've found. Yeah. We onboard a client. They go to you for bookkeeping, all that stuff. You are forward. You are everything that's happening. Like, okay, set up, yeah. moving forward. This is everything that's happening. Current and I'm yeah. I'm just the janitor. I'm like, all right, X client has four past tax returns. We got to file. We got to go do this and that. Because usually I mean, then, yeah. the projects that are lagging behind are always tax. Yeah. And so it naturally just falls to me to go in and I have to just clean up everything that happened in the past now the beauty in that and the reason that we can do that is um and to brooks question of is our team all tax we we pretty much have three people that are on our team we have six total but three mainly specifically working on game one financial um and it is it's me you and then jamarian who just came on full time with us jamarian's helping with content editing and he's also helping with the bookkeeping side of things i'm mainly doing monthly calls with clients so client relationship and then books and then you're mainly doing tax yeah um I think it works, and, and this is where I was going with that, is it works because we've been able to delegate all that off of you. And this was last year. Like, my whole focus is, like, if anybody yeah. could have been in here seeing it, I'm like, every week I'm telling Garrett, like, give, give me that. Me. Give me the give project. Me project. Yeah, dude. And it wasn't it was, because I was just crushing it and I wanted to do all the work. I mean, it you was, were. It was because I wanted to get it off your plate because we understood to grow this thing. You can't do everything. No. And you were you were really the bottleneck at all of it. It was like, well, Garrett has to review the returns. Well, Garrett has to call the IRS. Yeah. Well, Garrett has to. And we're like, why? Why does Garrett have to do that? We yeah. can just delegate this out. And so we've been able to do a really good job of like pulling things off your plate that you yeah. didn't have to do. And unless you just really, really wanted to keep it, we removed it. And so now you can just do the tax returns because you have the time to. And uh, yeah, and even trying to phase out of that to some extent, just because everything else is now pulling me, you know, in a hundred different directions. So it's, it's, it's difficult because a lot. It's a constant struggle. It's a constant. You you delegate and And then then what happens six months, you got to do it all over. Yeah. yeah. And especially as we've grown is like, you know, previously I could do the bookkeeping and the tax because game one was growing. So if you only have 10 clients, you can manage and then you, that turns to 20. And then like, as you grow, it, it becomes more and more, it becomes difficult to do everything yeah. so we delegate part of it it's like okay well now i gotta delegate content editing stuff like that yeah jamar has got it okay now we got you know now if i could bring in a tax manager yeah. this is unfortunately i mean for obvious reasons this is somebody who's going to cost a lot of money is yeah. because they're going to be able to review returns Nice cpa get that off my plate because i have two firms i have a number of things outside of the firms that are still related to the firms but i have to get done i have hr i mean like everything that i have to do and that's not like, woe is me. Like, it's fine. It's just part of it. But sure. you're right. Delegation is is huge. Um, do you all have a financial advisor on board? No, we don't. Um, so tax. Question for Brooke, too, in the chat, if she's still listening, is 
do, does our brand name, Game On Financial, does it insinuate that? Because it's been Game On Tax or I something like that. Game, game On Book, yeah. I really like our name, brand name, and it's not changing. But I just, I always wanted that because I don't <laughs> yeah. get this question a lot, but. I think our name does kind of insinuate financial advisory. Inv- and a lot of people will ask us those questions. And I'll a lot of times tell them, like, look, I'm not a financial advisor. However, we do work with some financial advisors very closely, and mm-hmm. we kind of let them handle it. In the future, one day, if we can find a way to make it happen, the hardest part about that is, and we've talked about this, hiring people is going to be um, the, the most difficult thing we do. Yeah. We would have to find somebody who's in the space, who yeah. gets it, who wants to be here as much I, as we I do. Have an idea. And then a financial advisor. Well, I mean, there's there's probably like two or three people I can yeah. think of now. But the, then the question that begs the question: Why would they leave where they're at? Yeah. Because the people we're both thinking yeah. about. But they, so, they, so why would they good, leave? She makes a good point. It would be a great package, or it'd be the full package. And we've thought about that. And and truth be told, this is probably a, a conversation that we could do. I really want to do it when we bring on uh, one of the close financial advisors that we work with, which is Ben. Um, ben Lake, he's great. I I recommend you hit him up if you need stuff. I couldn't pay Ben enough. Yeah. Like, there's no but, shot. But here's the thing. So <laughs> I, I want Ben to come on, and yeah. he's, he is going to. Um, and we're going to talk about this exact thing of, of her point. Basically, a full service situation, right? Yeah. Where, to her point, to Brooke's point in the chat, she's saying, like, you come in, you don't know anything about money, you don't know anything about taxes, you don't know anything about investing. We're like the one stop shop. And I, I do think that's the future of our brand. I, I truthfully do. Like, this this point is not the first time we've thought about this. I'm it's f- going to take time to get there. And I think the reason is because we can't start doing four, five, six, until we've nailed down one, two, three. And right now we're nailing down like one, getting to two. And yeah. and that's really the tax and then the bookkeeping. And yeah. I think that we don't want to, you know, there, there's a saying in the business world of new, better, or more. We're not trying to do new until we've done everything. We've done everything better and we've done more of it. And then we've gotten to the scale where we can say, okay, we're ready to add something new. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I, I definitely think we want to do that. It's a great point. Um, I love hearing your perspective just from a greater perspective um, because that's who we're trying to serve. I, well, I think about it all the time. And, you know, the, the thing is, is like solving problems for our creators because we're we're dedicated to the space. And now it's like, okay, how can we help? And so every content creator we bring on, it's like, what what do you need? We know you need tax. Everybody, like everybody who comes to us needs tax and everybody, not everybody, half of them need bookkeeping. And we know this, that's what we're selling because we can speak to that so easily. Mm -hmm. It's what it's bread and butter. But then what other problems are they facing? A lot of them face agency problems. They can't, you know, they could, they have huge followings, but can't seem to like monetize it. Can't monetize it. Can't get these brand deals and these sponsorships that they should be getting that we see other creators. And so we say, we know people. When it comes to legal, you know, we know people. When it comes to financial, we know people. Having all that in one place would be great. That being said, again, actually doing it, we could do it and launch an absolute subpar service right now. And if we did that, that hurts the brand and it's us getting ahead of ourselves. And that's that's what terrifies me is like, let's nail down what we're doing 100%. until it is like perfect. We onboarded a client. How how many hours was it the other day? Four. <laughs> Four hours. So we had a new client. Joseph got, so we had the call with the client. That was an hour there. And that was the client wanted, was looking for a, a CPA. They made a decision about two weeks later. Joseph Plus scheduled an onboarding call, call. Like four days. You got on the call, set everything up. That call Maybe took an hour. I don't know. You can speak Not to quite, it. Yeah. Not quite an hour. Passed to Jamarian. Once you did the initial setup, Jamarian clears transactions, comes back to you for review. You look at it. You're back with the client for questions and onboarding's done. It's like that compared to where we were a year and a half, two years ago is ridiculous. Yep. That compared to any other account. And I don't know another account at touching that. Like mm-hmm. four hours is insane. Yep. That like... If we can do that consistently now, so now we've done that better, can we do more of it? Like, mm-hmm. can we do that can consistently we scale it? Can we scale it? T- for 10 clients during tax season? Because yep. if we can do that, nobody's touching us. Like, that is yeah. that is ridiculously good and efficient. Then it's like, okay, like, now take that, take the breadth of clients that we have, the client base we truly have now, and it's like, okay, 
Could half of these client, this client base that we built, could half of that benefit from a financial advisor? Should we look at bringing a financial advisor on board? Yeah, because to be honest with you, and, and this is a good point as well to make uh, to Brooks' point, a lot of our clients, even if they do bring up financial advisory as a as a topic, they don't really need it. And what I mean by that is usually the problem is cash flow. With almost all of our clients, they may make two hundred thousand dollars in a year. But they only have, a, you know, twenty k of it because they spend it a lot, and that twenty k is probably going to be what they pay their taxes with. Yep. So then now we're saying, well, yeah, you should you should definitely see a financial advisor and get you know get something invested, and then and then the advisor's like, we want to invest ten percent of your you know your earnings this year, or whatever, and they're like ten percent that that'd be like twenty five k, and then you're then they're like, I don't have twenty five k, and so they can't even start, and so yeah. I think the knowledge surrounding it, which to to Brooks' point this is really our goal right now is where, where we can't maybe service that maybe right now we're just outsourcing. We're saying, Hey, go check out Ben. Hey, go check out Nick. Hey, go check out these other people that we work with. Um, and, and really just referring them work. We can educate people on it and we can make content like today. We're talking about to say, if you're a content creator and you make over a hundred K of revenue a year on your 1099s, you need to talk to a financial advisor. Yep. You may can't pay them to do it right now. You may can't set up a plan, but you need to talk to them and get some information. We can just start to do that. Start the relationship. Start the if relationship. Nothing else. Yeah. And and that's honestly that's what a lot of us mm-hmm. professionals on this side are trying to do is just have the conversations. You have a lot of discovery calls with clients that don't turn into you know Not, paying yeah. clients, but I think you're adding value to those clients because just in that forty five minutes you talk to them. Now they know a contact. You may even refer them to someone else. Yep. Now they know timelines, and they're able to actually see, okay, what does a budget for this look like and what, you know. Well, it's almost going back to the Hormozy thing about get, just give it away for free. Like I've talked to so many now that, hey, I want to talk about an LLC, and they come to me and they think I'm going to help them set it up or give them some level of advice. And I, the first thing I tell them is like, actually, I don't, I don't do that because it's a legal, that is a legal thing you need to do that I, I can't do. Because it's outside of a registered agent for a thousand people. And yeah, and so I'm like, but I can point you to somebody who can do it, and now that puts them in almost the circle of referrals that we have. And yep. so, like, you know, Ben at the financial advisors part of that, John Laster, like all these people is like now, and that's why we created the Discord is like so people can find these people. So yeah, maybe they join come the Discord. By the way, if you guys join the Discord, we're gonna drop the link uh, in the YouTube description. Yeah, join the Discord. I need please. to put the Discord. I need to put the link here too. Yep, but. Yeah, just doing that, like, so that, I mean, it's wild to think about, but, like, once you get involved in that circle of professionals, now, right. like, you you have a trusted source you could go to at any time. And even if you're not paying right. for any of it at the time, you may not need it now, but right. one day you will. And so being able to go there, I like Brooks' idea of having one, having it all in one place. I think building that is much harder because... I dropped the link in the chat, Brooke. <laughs> there we go. Um, wow, that was quick. Um yeah, once, like, it's, you know, it's hard to find really good quality workers. It's hard to find people who are really invested in the space and they mean it and they truly are. Like, I can see it. Like, I know John's in the space. I know Ben is in the space. And then once you have those people, why would they leave where they're at? Money and a piece of the pie. And it's like, okay, well, how much should that piece of the pie be? How much ownership are we talking? And how much money do you want? Like yeah. finding that, like you, you're asking, the, you're looking to find a unicorn yeah. and it's just very, it's way harder than you think. Like I think for us selling that, you know, se- not selling accounting services to clients, but selling that to a potential employee or someone who would work with us as a financial advisor, anybody, that's kind of our goal in building this company is like, we want to Brooke's point that she's talking about there. That would be so cool to have a one-stop shop. We agree. Like we want yeah. that. We want this thing to be so big that not only clients are coming to us like, "Hey, we really want your help. We we need whatever and trying to pay us to do services for them." Excuse me, but we also have tons of financial advisors and other people like, "We'd love to work with you." Yeah. Like that's what we want because now we have the leverage to be able to say, "Okay, here's where you would fit in. Here's here's kind of what we're going for. Do you does that fit with you know your goals and align with what you want to do?" Right. And so I think that really is our goal ultimately. Me and you've sat and talked at length about this and talked about what we see the future of game on doing. I definitely think potentially agency in the future, potentially financial advisory and investment services in the future. I don't know what that looks like. 
I don't know the timeline on it, but I do think that as we grow, and I, and I really believe that 2023 has been a big year for us. I think 2024 is going to be even bigger. Yeah. I think we're going to really start to get to a point where, as you said, we see what are the needs, you know, yeah. what are these clients' needs. I'll tell you, yeah, and just speaking on that, because I know we're running on time here. No, we're good. Um, we can go all day. Yeah, we can Yeah, we can go all day if we have to. Um, there was a, I spoke with an attorney not too long ago who's in the space, and um, I'm not going to say who it is just because of what they told me, but they were talking about working relationship. They had another accounting firm they were referring to. Sure. And I'm not going to name the firm, but they said that they basically said the firm is trying to do too much. They have the agency and this and that. And when I went to their website and looked at it and I know what he's saying, I know what he's talking about the attorney. I know exactly what he means by that. And it's because the tax piece kind of fell into the same old, like, extending everybody returns aren't getting done on time this it sounds and that. real good on the cover and they're billing way like super high prices for the same level of service people are used to getting because we're going to bill a little bit higher than normal but we also move we quick. thought we provide that value yeah we're and so brooke just put in the chat i'd love the subscription-based model if it gave me access to all that my question then to you brooke and, and really to all of our clients and this may be a good tweet would be what does that work to you yeah because I know on our end, what we charge kind of not hourly rate, but what we charge for the services we do. Mm-hmm. And I also know what, you know, somebody like Ben maybe would charge to his clients. I also know what an attorney would charge. And you talk about a subscription model where basically you have unlimited access to those people. What you're paying for at that point, you're paying for access. Now, yeah. it's really interesting because a super <laughs> business, a super business, uh, a business tactic model is selling access. That is mm-hmm. a real thing. And that is one way to scale your business very large. So it's a, it's a good model that she brings up. But can content creators at most levels fit in there somewhere? Because to be honest with you, the pricing that comes to my mind immediately off the top or something like that doesn't. Uh, it would be too much. And so I think that's where you start to see, okay, does this does this content creator's business warrant a price for, I don't know, a few thousand dollars a month? Can they afford that? Over the year, maybe they're spending fifteen or $25,000 uh, with just legal and professional services alone, is that something that's really affordable? You know what I mean? So I love uh, that. Read that, that. That next comment too is really good. Um, first time chat, by the way. Yeah, yeah you're out. absolutely right. So here's the thing uh, in going on that and what you just said that. So for our time, for an attorney's time, mm-hmm. And and by the way, an attorney and an agent, we're going to say are the same thing here. We're going to say they're synonymous, even though, there are attorneys who focus more on the legal aspect, maybe setting up LLCs and stuff like that. And then the agents are looking for brand deal sponsorships, but yep. those folks are usually attorneys who can review contracts. Mm-hmm. We're going to call them one. Sure. We're going to give you the benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt that they're just one person. And then the financial advisor, you're looking like 500, 500, 500, 1500 a month minimum, yeah. like at a and, minimum. And, and, to, like, this, and to, the, to the chat, like talking about it, I, I definitely agree. It would definitely not be a, you get access to all of them or you don't model. It would definitely be yeah. packages and it would be tiered, which is essentially what we're doing with our services now. You know, if you are, uh, to Brooke's point, you know, lower level of service, which is really more so lower level of time spent on that client, maybe you don't need the $1,500 or $2,500 a month package because you don't require that level of service. Yep. You still want access to them, but you get access to them once a quarter maybe. Or you get access to them once, twice a year, something yeah. like that. Or you get however much time per month allocated, and then it kind of the pricing goes up and is tiered. I definitely agree, and I think that's something that we would want to do. But what you have to understand is <laughs> we're talking about professionals. Take Ben, for instance, and I hope Ben's okay with us talking about him, but you know, Ben, ben has a lot of industry experience. He works with very high wealth individuals. Th- this is not a cheap person to, to pay, you know what I mean? And so from yeah. a business standpoint for us, co- making sure – covering that person's salary, you know, and from your standpoint, making sure it's actually worth it from a business standpoint would be the most consideration we would have to do. Yeah. We don't charge a consultation fee for the initial consult and discovery call, but a lot of people do. And we decided we didn't want to do that. I decided we didn't want to do that because, you know, that is to some level, to some degree, it's, it's obviously validating a potential client. If somebody's willing to put money down for the call, then that tells you they're they're yep. truly interested. But also being in the space, I want to talk to as many creators. I want to help as many as we truly of can. Course. 
And that may be through free content like YouTube, a podcast, something like that. Yep. But we're trying to help as many as we can. So I do not bill for the discovery call. If our discovery call takes 20 minutes and we still have 25 minutes left and you have general questions, I'm happy to answer them mm-hmm. up until a point, sure. right? At, at, until I'm getting out of my wheelhouse. That's not the case for everybody. You know, what it would cost to get Ben on the phone for somebody like that, you know, yeah, these people cost money. That That's what it yeah. comes down to. Now, Going back to the partnership idea, what I would truly love to do is look into something like creator codes, like with what Warzone does, but have it with affiliate program. So not just with creators themselves, uh, you know, a a good example, Brooke mentioned it, but somebody like Corbin, like if, if I gave Corbin a code and said, hey, give this to any referral they'll get a discount. We'll also kick some back to you. So if it was like the creator who signs up gets a 5% discount and then Corbin gets a 5% call to kickback, Mm -hmm. not illegal, but we're, he's referring. So of the fee, right. Of the monthly fee or the annual fee, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. that would be dope. But now we're out 10% margin. So you got to, we got to find some kind of math there that makes that worth it and profitable. But doing that, we could also do it with our partner, the people we partner with, Mm -hmm. People like Ben or somebody like that, if they send us a, a person, we could tell Ben, hey, if you're sending somebody to us, give them your code so that they can use it when paying for our our subscription or whatever. Because then, one, Ben is incentivized to send us people, which I think he's doing anyway, but it's another incentive. We get to give back to Ben for doing it. Mm-hmm. Love that. And also, now the creator is getting a small discount. And it's like they, it's they benefited benefit. from knowing Ben and Ben sending them here, mm-hmm. right? So, like... Anybody who knows Ben now is getting that benefit. Maybe they don't sign up for our services, but again, going back to the original point, at least they can start the conversation with us. They're not ready to buy yet. That's fine. Yeah, least, we've had the conversation. Right. You're, we have your our email address. Just help them. That's it. If yeah, help them by just telling them they can't afford it. That's fine. Too. I don't want to do it right now. Maybe in December. Like exactly. come back in December. Yeah. Uh, we'll be here. We'll be doing the same and, thing. And to Brooke's point, the idea is that I make my money back hundred percent, and I think that's what we want to focus on in in all of this is. And in a lot of ways, we usually show clients this of like, hey, we saved you this amount of taxes this year. You completely, like, you doubled our bill. You you saved double what our bill is. You covered our bill and you got some value back for free. And you got all your taxes filed and your books done. Yeah. Like, the stuff you you had to have done, yeah, yeah, you effectively got it. You got a return on your investment for something you had to have done. Right. No matter where you went. Which doesn't really happen anywhere. So, yeah, I I definitely think that's something. We need to raise our rates. (laughs) <laughs> we need yeah. to charge more that's what this conversation is telling us but yeah i do i do think that's the goal and i think that if we can basically if we can grow to the point where we have enough people that we see that need it um because you're not the first person that's bringing it up we have plenty of other people talking to us about this but when we see it as a, a way that we can truly um grow to that point and provide that level of service we feel like to our standards to yeah, a standard that I, yeah we feel like that's is extremely high we will then do so. And and I'm super excited for that growth, to be honest, because I think there would be nothing greater than being able to look back on maybe even a podcast like this and saying, remember back at episode 14 when we're at episode 100 or episode 200 and say like, remember when that was an idea and now we do that, we offer that service, you know, that would be really, really cool. Yeah, it, that's the thing is, you know, to our our standard because we, we have things we can work on 100%. Not saying we're the best or anything like that, but the where we want to be is a lot like – the traditional model is like just get through tax season, and I how hate often that. You, how I often do hate me and that. You talk about though, like with scale and business. Like me and you were talking about all the time, like how can we grow this? How can we get in, in front of more people? How can we? How, how do we get to X number that we want to get to? It's like mm-hmm. we, we talk about these things all the time. So um, definitely not the first time we brought it up, and I think we're both really excited uh, for the future. I need a financial advisor that wants it. Like we want it, like that wants to be like sitting down to do this podcast on Thursdays, which we said we're going to do every Thursday. We're going to do it at this time. We're going to record them. We're going to put them on YouTube. I need another, like the financial advisor wants, has to want to do that, has to want to be involved, has to be going. When they go home, they're on Twitch. They're on, they're doing the same things we're doing all the time. I'm not, I don't want to hire just, I'm not hiring just another worker because then it's like when people, somebody like Brooke is saying that, what, she's in a way saying is not that she wants another me, but she wants somebody who wants to be in the space as much as I do. Like yeah. she wants somebody from game on financial who does financial advisory, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And they're truly part of the brand. They're representing the brand. They're yeah. just that it, it is them, right? They're wearing yeah, the shirt, we, the logo that like, because we all can of have that. Stat, we can have 
I could go hire somebody tomorrow. We can have a hundred staff that work in the background that nobody sees, but as far as building the brand and truly servicing the clients, client relationships and client advisory in general, which is basically what me and you do all day, every day, there's, there's an art to that. And you can tell when people care and when they don't. And if somebody's just in the space, like the attorney you brought up earlier that you talked about, you would see right through that. Brooke yeah. would see right through that. She'd be on a call with them for five minutes and she'd be like, this guy doesn't even understand yeah. what I do. So to find that is very unique. I do think it's growing. We've probably talked to 10 referral sources, whether it be attorneys or financial advisors, to her point, yep. in the past six months. Super exciting. There's those people out there. And I think to the chat comment earlier, um, I think partnerships with those is very realistic at some point. It's just navigating that and making sure it's at the right time. We've actually had firms reach out to us wanting to effectively buy a piece of what we're doing. And I think that's a good sign because that's, that shows that doing something right. we're doing something right, whether they knew exactly what we were doing or not. But if that's the case, you know, it begs the question, like, why would we leave? Like if the, the money's fine, we're doing good, everything, and we're growing and we're growing at the rate we want to, and we're setting the standard and every year is better, better, better. Like if we're doing that, Anybody who comes on, it, whether they're buying a piece of us or we're hiring them to some extent, like if they don't fit in that, yeah. I never want somebody to say what the attorney said about the other accounting firm, which is like they're just trying to do too much. They're yeah. like, I think that would the, scare me. I think if the equation equals helping more clients yeah. in a way that we feel like is to our standard. We will do it every time. And that doesn't always even mean that the money makes sense. It could even be an investment on our part of like, we're actually eating some on this deal. We're, we're not going to make our return right away on this financial advisor or on this whoever attorney that yep. we're bringing in. But we feel like it's going to help excel our firm and it's going to help us reach more clients. We truly are going to be able to add more value to more people yep. than we can currently that's when we will make the decision. Together. And we know like ultimately that will pay off. 100%. That that will always pay off. And yeah, I, that that's the thing. Sometimes you got to put your money where your mouth is and like, you know, you're, you're in the space, you're doing it and your yeah. game on financial, like it's time to, you know, buck up. Yeah. <laughs> now you got to pay somebody to get Definitely. it done. And Definitely. it's kind of scary, but at the same time, it's so exciting. Like the, I can't wait until the day when that we are truly all encompassing and we can one stop shop People just say like, I don't know what your needs are. It doesn't matter what it is. Just go talk to them. They'll get you sorted and get mm -hmm. you where you need to be. Definitely. That's what I would love. Definitely. Right now we can do that for tax in the future. Maybe Brooke, come be on, come be our financial advisor here. You can be a part of the team. <laughs> I'm um, going to get Brooke on, uh, on an episode where our, our goal is, and I said this, that our goal is to have our first guest in August. It hasn't happened. It's been tough, uh, communicating with them to try to like coordinate the time. Yeah. Um, we do have guests coming. We want creators to come on. Um, it, it, as you're watching this, drop comments on people you'd like to hear on. Yeah. We definitely probably will get some of our clients, but I definitely even think people that aren't our clients, getting them on would be really exciting just to talk about their content journey, what they do, their business, all that stuff. It's funny because the people we've tried to get on to this point are the financial advisors and attorneys and stuff. And because of all the disclaimers you have to have, yeah. that's like really put a, throwing a wrench in because we have our disclaimers, which is this is not your tax advice. This is just generic yeah. tax. Anything we talk about, it's just Bro, generic. It's a very hard test. That's what it is. What would she ask to get to become a, a CFP? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, yeah, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy, but I mean, Brooke's smart enough; she could do it. But of course, what uh, that was the topic. That was the main topic. Brooke, do you anybody else in chat have any other questions while we're on the? Oh, nice. Okay. I took the classes. Just oh yeah, go take the test, Brooke. Crush it. We'll hire come, you. Yeah, I was about to say, come join us. Um. Any other questions in chat? Anything like that? I don't think we have any other topics. Um, That's pretty much it. I, I am glad that we kind of got to talk about that piece a little bit because it is exciting talking about our future. Me and you talk about it tons off camera. And I think just giving people a little bit of an insight into what our future plans are and the goals for Game On is, is super cool. Because, I mean, we do want to be transparent about what we're trying to do here. And it is just help creators. Yeah. I love nothing more than getting off calls with creators and they say thank you for what we're doing. Yeah. That's they are paying us and they're saying thank you. That's that could that could never go further. I feel so much better now after we had our talk. Like after we did this, like that's yeah. that's Just every that single time mind that we're providing. Um I I've told people like I don't think we can help you. I oh, actually nice Kyle. Appreciate it. Appreciate you joining in, man, for real. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Kyle. Yeah. I didn't even realize. Yeah. 
Appreciate yeah. it, Kyle. Shout yeah, out. Appreciate y'all tuning in for real. We uh we're we're streaming these every single Thursday, usually between twelve and two, sometime twelve and two Eastern. Yeah. Um, but they all go up on YouTube. So if you ever miss one, they're on YouTube. We're trying to grow it. We've been consistent. This is episode fourteen. Mm-hmm. We're gonna try to be consistent throughout the year. We got a goal of a hundred YouTube videos up by the end of the year. I think we're about a quarter of the way there, a little bit more than a quarter of the way yeah, there. So yeah. Um yeah. I don't think I have anything else. You, you good? Follow us on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual. Join the um, Discord. We'll join the Discord. The description down below. Absolutely join the Discord. Outside of that, I don't have anything else. It was a good talk today. Y'all come back and join us next week. We'll be doing it about the same time. We love when people come through and ask questions. We'll sit here and talk uh, topics all day. We'll even come up with the topics. But if there are things that you are interested in, that's why we do it. So please come through and ask questions. Um, leave comments on YouTube. Let us know what we should talk about next. Outside of that, I am your local tax guy. We have a closing. Yeah, I'm your local tax guy. This is Joseph, the manager. We, the content accountant. Do you want me to just refer to you? Can yeah, the content accountant. Um, follow us on Twitter. DM us all that stuff. So, yeah, that's See it. See you guys on the next one.